Hello. Hello. Oh, yes. That is so weird that started doing that. I know, because I didn't do that in the beginning. Yeah. Um, yeah. Welcome back all to Move for a Movement. I have with me here Charlotte Nass and Pete Lair, uh, two out of three co-founders of Artist Climate Collective. Yeah. Um, it's an issue that is dear to my heart, environmentalism. And I do think that the arts have a huge role to play in making the change we need there. So I'm so excited to have them here today. Thank you so much for joining. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So just actually taking direct from your website to give an idea of what you do, what you are. Uh, the Artist Climate Collective is dedicated to using the arts as a vessel to promote a positive impact in the fight against climate change. I am curious how that mission evolved and how the organization itself started. What's the backstory? Um, I can take this one, I guess. Um, so Charlotte and I have, are both like very passionate, I guess, about the environmental change, uh, climate change movement. Um, and for a while now, few years back we've been talking just exchanging ideas about doing some sort of climate change based performative creation process um originally it was something that was that something like live that we wanted to create and put on um so we've been you know bouncing that idea back and forth for actually a few years and then over covid times when you know when we were just talking and FaceTiming, we just kind of were like, well, why don't we just put this idea, you know, to life with all this time that we have and like really create a, you know, foundation for it. Um, since we were, you know, both working a little bit less and all of this stuff with, you know, the pandemic. Um, and then we just started rolling with it and just created this online platform that was just like, not really in the original game plan of how we wanted to go about doing this, but it just morphed over time into what the collective is now. And um, yeah, we just really wanted to combine the idea of, you know, using the arts and the activism towards climate change and kind of like finding a bond between the two that, um, yeah, just uses that emotional power of the arts to like find change in people. Yeah. Amazing. So there has been evolution already. Like it seems like the organization is on the newer side. It was sort of a, a pandemic project. Where, like a lot of people in the arts are like, oh, I have this time, but I have this passion. Right. What can I do with that? So they created something. Uh, but even, you know, in this short period of time, there have been shifts as you've reflected and thought and, you know, kind of honed that vision of where you want to go. Yeah, definitely. We've had the discussion like, you know, this was maybe a pandemic creation, but like, we do definitely want to like take it into like the next steps and continue it on um, to the yeah. best of our ability. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're like always changing, like we're we're very open to the idea of change, and so it's like, oh well, how do we build like a community around us? We can't just like release a film and expect people to watch it if we don't have like an audience. So it's right. like we need other ways of bringing artists yeah, in, the arts community in. So. So we're trying to do right now. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah. I think there are sort of two things about the arts. I mean, there are so many things, but there are two central elements that I think make it so powerful, and that's community and story. You know, you just sort of reference that in a way. I think there actually is research out there. I, I want to look into this more. It like keeps going on my to-do list to like find out what it actually is. But I heard it in a podcast, but there is research demonstrating that the power of story is the thing that can reliably begin to change hearts and minds, right? Because it, it almost is sort of this back door into kind of breaking those walls we put up, those defenses of like, this is what I believe and it's tied into my identity. And like, all those kind of things that we put up that do block us learning new things right. and growing and evolving as humans and changing our minds. Yeah. Um, so, that among many other reasons why I, I fully believe in your mission of here, mm -hmm. here are the arts, here's how we leverage to make this change to have a planet to live on. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Another big thing of like what just drives us to like really believe in the arts is we just find that, you know, you can read and try and learn and watch so much about 
the science behind like climate change and what we need to do, but art's just just something that can, you know, change perspective so differently than something like that. So that's like the power we're really trying to like build. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 different and I feel like in this that it's deeper, like not better or worse. So right. those are not qualifiers that I like to use generally. Yeah. Um it's deeper in your bones, especially dance. This, you know, we know like science is beginning to learn more about your neurons. Like that is why watching dance is so powerful. This this person on the stage is having this emotional and kinesthetic experience and you come to feel that in yourself. And that's why like, I know at least for me, I'm sitting there watching a dance performance and I feel my skin tingling. If if it's, <laughs> if the, the performer is really giving themselves, right, to, to, the, to the performance. And aesthetically, you know, all the, the things that make a powerful resonant performance, but that achieved, I sit there and I feel it in my boats. Like, I don't think anything else you can really compare it to. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, so also right from the website, uh, <laughs> and this goes back to what we were just talking about, mm -hmm. ACC believes that the arts have a unique emotional power to provoke people to think differently about the, cult the causal mechanisms that impact climate change. That's really interesting to me, the, the causal mechanism. So could you break that down a little bit more? Because I see the meaning, I understand the meaning, but I feel like there are a lot of layers there. Yeah, I think that what strikes me the most about climate change is we see the science and realize that there's this cause and effect that happens with humans mm -hmm. where we do one thing and then maybe 50 years later we see the effects and so there's such a time gap and the arts have this unique approach to close that gap you're able to capture a causal mechanism and also the effect in like one evening and that's just i think so special yeah, yeah in that story it's like cutting out those years in between when that emotional connection that is necessary like kind of dissipates that yeah. Um, and that's why I feel like climate change can be such a politically fraught issue. It's because like, and I feel like this has started to change, but generally people don't see it in their everyday lives. You know, now we're having increased weather events and it's like, oh, you have a cousin in, in this area of the country that there's been like, oh, so that like people are starting to see it. I don't know if they recognize it as such, but yeah. we are starting to see those effects. But for a lot of people, it is something that affects their daily lives unlike healthcare. <laughs> no, <laughs> these other issues that drive our politics and our, our social beliefs. But that's gonna change if we <laughs> if we don't start, you know, making change. Yeah. So I, I think it's a great way to like build the connection before we have to yep. experience the change. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Beautiful. <laughs> like so many things going around. It's like, what thread do I want to pull? Um, also, coming right from the website, because I believe in letting people speak for themselves, ACC unites artists around climate folks' work uh, and also supports activists and organizations in climate change work. Um, would you say those are sort of two main prongs of what you do? Um, are there sort of other areas you could delineate? Um, and also, are those different areas in conversation or do you see them as sort of like this is what we do over here and this is what we do over here a little mm -hmm. more delineated yeah. if that makes sense yeah no i i mean they're definitely the two main things that we do i think mm -hmm. one sector of that is that we try to commission artists um to create work centered around climate change and so those are our projects and then most of the profits and sales that come from those projects go to climate organizations that we think um, are important and are really near and dear to my heart. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think they are in conversation because they are, artists are very informed on what those organizations are, are the people like supporting us know like which organizations they want mm -hmm. their money to go towards. And so I think we're constantly like back and forth, like learning new things and teaching artists too about the organizations that we try to support. So. Right. Yeah. Mm. yeah, and in engaging arts communities within those organizations as as leaders even, or just as part of the work 
there's this wonderful um, article in, I think it was Dance Magazine, about this artist in New York running for city council. And she's making this argument, like artists need to be part, need to be on the ballot. Like <laughs> these are the skills we have, these are perspectives. And this is why it matters for us to be leadership. Uh, and I was, I was already sold, but I was very sold. <laughs> I've said it for a long time. It's like, you know, artists have this perspective and this way of operating that I think could impact the world so far beyond making creative work which is like I'll argue also for days how important that is <laughs> but um having artists in all these different places these different communities in the world making the change we need to make I think is vital might mm -hmm. just be me I might just be biased but <laughs> <laughs> no definitely I think that artists have such a unique way of thinking yeah. about the yeah. world and mm -hmm. um bringing their perspective into conversations that are like more professional, you know, like any is, conversation. yeah, <laughs> I think is important. And I think that artists get kind of like thrown to the side, especially dancers, like after yeah. your career is over, it's like, okay, now you can be a teacher. And it's like, well, <laughs> I want to do something else. And like, I think that I should yeah. be able to put dancer on my resume and get a job. Right, and like have that as a strong yeah. resume. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think one unique thing is this, I mean, first of all, the ability to create something out of nothing, like have a vision in your head, work with other people. Maybe you have, it's blank up here, but you have these people in front of you. And okay, okay, we're going to figure this out together. That ability to do that in community for one. And all this, also, I feel like this ability to, okay, I spent a lot of time on that, but we're going to go in a different direction. Like we tried out this like two minutes of work and I don't like it. I'm sorry. We're going to scrap it. We're going to, so this ability to create something and then pivot to another direction, if it's just not working out mm -hmm. um, and not get so emotionally attached to that, you know, and have mm -hmm. that ability again, to imagine what that other direction could be, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like are, it's crucial. Yeah. yeah those are like accumulated skills that you develop as you're working as an artist. Yeah. It's very yeah. So important. It's important. Mm -hmm. Just the discipline, like <laughs> the ability to get your butt in class at 9 a.m. when you were in the theater till 12 the, the other night. Like I would say artists are some of the most hardworking people there are. And this yeah. kind of social perception that it's like all fun and games or these are people who haven't grown up yet. No, these are industries with a lot of hardworking people <laughs> that are in the theater late at night. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's true. Giving this all. Yeah. Yeah, I would hope uh, COVID began to shift that a little, just with the the astounding numbers. I don't know if either of you heard about the Be an Arts Hero campaign. They're just the numbers they put out of like, this is what the arts contribute to the economy. This is the number of people who are out of work right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, I mean, everything from like costume designers, like all of the people who are impacted by the arts sector who are part of that. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, Washington, this is the money you gave you gave to the airline industry, and here are the numbers. And hello. Yeah, I know. that's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Arts constant. Again, I would hope COVID would begin to bring that consciousness a little bit up, and also just a sense of like Netflix got you through, these books got you through, Spotify mm -hmm. got you through. If like none of that was there, what would you be doing? Yeah. And then tell me things don't matter. I think that was like a meme on Facebook, <laughs> but I just will always remember that the way to frame that, you know. That's really impactful, though. Like. Yeah, so true. It's just like people don't even realize that they're consuming art. You know, mm -hmm. they're like, "Oh, I watch TV," and they're like, "That is art." Like, people that is art. Entire <laughs> lives on that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. Cool. You go to someone's home and you like the the decoration. That's interior design. That's an art. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's crazy. The creative mind yeah. got together, you know. Yeah, yeah, totally. Anyhow, I could get on my arts advocacy course for again days. Yeah. Um, so moving on. What is one thing again? It's a new organization, but sort of in your evolution thus far, we talked about a little bit. What's the one thing you're particularly proud of? And at this sort of newer stage, as you look to the future, you envision. What's one thing that you are working towards or sort of a growth theory you'd like to address? So sort of two prongs there. 
And something you're proud of, something to address or work on. Well, something I guess that you can consider us proud of more as like an accomplished sense, accomplishments mm -hmm. and things. Um, we've collaborated on one of our projects with an artist who is a costume designer. And um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen this at all or anything like through our social media, but she made a line of leotards for us. Um, nice. So all of the leotards are very like sustainably crafted where um, it's like recycles material for some parts of the leotard and then the other is like structured with costume, um, mm -hmm. yeah. like disposed costume pieces that she puts really together. Amazing. Yeah, so it's this very like sustainably crafted leotard and she has all different sorts of styles you can buy and everything and I don't know we're just very proud of like the way yeah. that's turned out um yeah and we love her work um so that's just an accomplishment I guess we're proud of um yeah and we love doll she makes they're yes. so beautiful like this patchwork design of, like you wouldn't even think that it would work but it's just like little leftovers from projects that she's done in the past and she's like I just like I have all these scraps like let me make right. leotards out of them and we're like great yeah yeah so, so that's, that's just kind of like one of the small projects we kind of commission um and we're hoping to just like continue small projects with like individual craftsmen as uh, like throughout just like the year um mm -hmm. every year with nice. ACP. um yeah and i guess i'm just kind of proud of the way that things have started to come together and like we're you know this Fiscally sponsored by a 501c3 nonprofit organization, which is really right there, yeah. In a lot of ways. Um, step. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is a really important step, I think, to creating like an established collective. Um, we also we collaborated with um, my um, school where I'm getting my undergraduate degree, oh, yes. the Ohio State University, um, the Sierra Club. The chapter that's at Ohio State gave us um, funding for Emily Lovedahl's like line of leotards. So yeah, very mm -hmm. grateful for that. Very okay. that like, connection that we made with mm -hmm. those people. They're so wonderful. Yeah. So, um, is there a social handle people can can check out and get website learn for, more? For By yeah. any if they're in, uh, for those yeah that line of leotards. Oh yeah, oh, it's on our just, website. Um, yeah. If you go to our projects page, then no nice. okay. great. I think we have like a whole marketplace tab on our website. Yeah, too. you can just go like awesome. straight to like buying them, or you can learn a little bit more about like how they were made. Yeah, exactly. awesome. We'll post that up. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Yeah, I, I don't think people. That's a consciousness that a lot of people have. I think it's getting a little better, but the, just fast fashion and and the amount yes. of waste and just general environmental issues that like. Oh, I'm gonna get this from Forever 21. It's super cute, and you wear it like two times, then you donate it. Like even so, like or just throw it out. Like yeah. it's a lot of chemicals. Yeah, those yeah. natural like, resources. Of, like yeah. Um, I'm very like passionate about that and a lot of reusable things and all that stuff. So yeah. Yeah, yeah we really wanted to like amplify the artist's voice, and so Emily actually brought that up to me at one point. She was like, "I'm really passionate about like." making my own clothing that is sustainable uh -huh. or going to savers or like somewhere where you can buy something that somebody's already worn so that you can support uh -huh. the recycled materials and yeah not the industry that harms people in, in the making of clothing yeah <laughs> yeah making. that's a whole other you know the human rights and, and you know human ethics side yeah. of it like yeah, worker rights like all all right. did. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and you can learn more about like Emily's perspective on it, like on our project page, we have some quotes from her and like more information about how everything is created mm -hmm. on there. Yeah. Um, Love it. Yeah, especially costumes, you think like, I think in particular, like competition dancers that it's like, they have like five routines for for this year of competition and then do those costumes ever get used again? That's true. And most of them are probably some sort of like plastic combination yeah to get created yeah not yeah. good Oof. well that's how we start to make changes making these other options available i was actually thinking i know one friend asked me she's like do you know of any clothing like or dancewear 
pipelines that are sort of sustainably sourced and you know generally ethical and i i didn't really have anywhere great to send her but now i do <laughs> yeah 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 there's also like leggings and tights yeah yeah there's tights yeah. and mm -hmm. shorts as well as the leotards yeah. which is and they're all unisex mm -hmm. so. yeah i mean that's awesome now i want to do a post of like if you're looking for you know ethical dance wear yeah. here you go Send people our way. <laughs> awesome. I love it. I love it. Um, as far as things we're looking forward to, um, so Emily's project is like one of our smaller, you know, like individual craftsman projects. But um, the biggest project we're now focusing on is a film project that is really nice. getting, you know, dancers, choreographers, videographers all involved to collaborate and make a really create a really big voice about like what we're trying to, you know, share with the world and kind of our mission. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what we've shifted to going like all speed ahead towards. Um, the film project, I mean, it. we have artists from all over um, the country creating to insert pieces into our like full evening of what we're trying to present. Um, mm -hmm. Right now we have choreographers in Atlanta, um, Arizona, I think San Francisco, the San Francisco. And also um, we have one side project in Winnipeg that will be, which is in Canada, um, that will be contributing to our film project. Um, and so how it can works is we're basically commissioning these choreographers in all of those home bases um, to create work like kind of higher dancers um, and we're also working to find videographers for all of these people and just create climate focused inspired um, environmental justice inspired pieces um, mm -hmm. to um, bring those all together and we're going to put on kind of a on-demand kind of evening that will showcase all of the premieres and new works um, We'll also hopefully have okay. some like educational speakers and um, spoken well, word yeah. poetry. Mm -hmm. Ooh, interdisciplinary. Yeah, yeah we're trying yeah, to really trying get to all of the aspects. Forms. Yeah. And it seems like those are all such different sort of subcultures. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and if done outside, you know, just so many different terrains and sort of. Right. Yeah, tones and aesthetics of the yeah. of the landscape that could be really and compelling to make together. Yeah, places of America. Yeah, yeah. Um, some things will be do, um, done. I think most are outside, but yeah, you know, one potentially on like an outdoor stage too. Um, yeah, it's it's looking really exciting. Um, the Atlanta film project is all, almost finished already, um, and the other ones are like in the works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lots of dancers involved, lots of it just is. like art that's being just Very created inspiring. in collaboration. Yeah, huh? exciting. A lot going on. Yeah, and it seems like just so much more than dance, which you both are dance artists, but you know, so far I've seen like fashion, and you're talking about you know poetry and all these other yeah. kinds of art forms coming together. So, and that's right in. In the literature on the website it's like it's artists you don't say just that's what we're really dancers <laughs> and choreographers yeah we're really trying to amplify like artists coming together to create you know mm -hmm. this mission and show it yeah i was speaking with a friend the other day about this actually she has a uh, a dance company that's very explicitly interested in interdisciplinary work she was a philosophy major and she's like Okay, the musicians over here and the dancers over here don't really talk. And why aren't these connections happening? Mm -hmm. She wrote a thesis on that, and that's ever since it's like what she's interested in I mean, building the those communities and the work together. You know, she has a um, sort of a literary magazine or like a, a she calls it Pinky Press. It's fine to name a company, but um, she's that. And she does like poetry readings, and they're all the bunch of friends and musicians she has, and all yeah. these different ways to bring artists together and in that sense of like building a coalition that can make change when it comes to the arts that's how you gotta do it <laughs> as far as that as far as i'm concerned yeah, no, I mean, that's so the more 
disciplines you can start connecting like the bigger the impact i think really yeah and just also the bigger the reach on like who you're reaching mm -hmm. yeah yeah like this person's gonna bring five friends and then they're gonna tell the in you right. multiple more time you you can more times you can multiply that by mm -hmm. like no, yeah. that's how you get people in the audience and that's how you get yeah. people experiencing that message mm -hmm. yeah oh, it goes back I, to community yeah that's, it's how you build it it's your community yeah yeah i also forgot to mention we have musicians like uh curating work for some yeah. of these pieces too which Amazing. is really nice. yeah. yeah yeah i think as dancers i like we so often come together with other artists like musicians and the orchestra and costume designers that it's like why wouldn't we right bring all these yeah. artists together Definitely. yeah it's like yeah. we know each other we work together <laughs> I know you, we have all these connections. Why not? That's yeah, that's really true. Thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. All right, so to start to wrap up a little bit, um, COVID, elephant in the room question. <laughs> it's been a time. I mean, we spoke about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, Artist Climate Collective has kind of been a, a pandemic project for for you both, fellow co-founder, couldn't make it. Uh, I am curious for you both sort of what's given you light what's what's kept you inspired to do something like this like to just keep believing in the ability to make work and stay in it as artists yeah what do you think Jamie? i mean i think everybody can agree that covid gave everyone a chance to like slow down and kind of reconsider or just like recollect your thoughts on how you want to go about your life uh, um I was lucky that a lot of my season like continued on, even though it, things like slowed down and things went virtual. I was working a lot throughout the time, but it still gave me a major um, a, a opportunity to like appreciate my job and like everything that you know I work for in like a whole different sense. And but at the same time, I did have this opportunity to like reflect what I wanted to use my work and like how I wanted to use that to amplify the things I care about. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's where I just kind of made the connection. And like I said, me and Charlotte have been talking about something like this for a while now. And so, yeah, I just, I decided that I wanna use my art to create change and create like a voice for myself. Um, and I know that Charlotte feels the same way about this. So yeah, I just, that, the slowdown of the world just like gave us the opportunity to jump on it and like realize that it's possible. Yeah, yeah, I definitely think that COVID gave me a moment to like really think about my life and be like, well, this is actually really, it's gonna be very short, you know? And so mm -hmm. like, I'm in my twenties and I'm never gonna have my twenties again, you know? And mm -hmm. that was kind of a shock. And also it's just like, people are always like, oh, like, you can do that when you're done dancing. They're like, hey, you'll have time to do it like later. And it's like, well, I don't know. I feel like I have the energy now to be able to like do these things that I think are very important. And, like and I, yeah, yeah, and the passion. And I just feel like, why wait? I don't know. Yeah. 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 For, for dancers, it's like, like you said, you can do that when you're done because like maybe 35 or at least like ballet dancers yeah. um and it's like okay so i have this shorter career you know at least performing career it's like how can i make the best of that you know mm -hmm. how can i really make that worth every second yes i think it'd be one thing dancers definitely sort of reflect on yeah oh, yeah i feel Plus, like it's fun. you're changed and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like becoming an individual artist rather than like part of a company i think it's really mm. like it's like my interesting career. yeah it's this company it's also yeah all work that i do outside of the company and right. even though we do appreciate the companies yes, we work know. for <laughs> we love the company we work for. <laughs> yeah it's like <laughs> am i in like versus who is the core that i am a part of or whatever or like i am a soloist for x company it's like who am i as an artist within this company it's like who you put first sort of yeah i feel like new way to think of it yeah, definitely. I think the narrative is definitely changing. Like, I am Charlotte, mm -hmm. not just a 
in That's terms right. of you know, yeah. And dancers starting to realize like, is this company right for me? Not just because it's a job, mm -hmm. you know? It's like, is this really where I wanna be? Yeah. yeah. You know, is this where I feel like I thrive that creatively I'm inspired and fed, you know? Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. great to see those those shifts starting to happen as you referenced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So we spoke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we spoke a little bit about um, things coming up that people can can look out for and support. Is there anything else you want to sort of put on people's radar for things to look out for and support? Um, I mean, we are like I said, all of our focus pretty much right now is going towards this film project and like making yeah. sure also yeah. that we're um, yeah. compensating all of our artists and like making sure uh -huh. everybody, you know, gets proper um, compensation for their work, you know. Yeah. Um, so that's something we want to do with, so that's just something we are asking people to support specifically. And yeah, just, we um, have a um, like a campaign page through our fiscal sponsorship. And so if people want to, we're um, actually a woman from my school made these like beautiful necklaces and earrings nice. at, like recycled. Like she took mm -hmm. like old jewelry and like took the chains and yeah, like found uh, shells and stuff and put them together and they're so beautiful and we're offering them as a gift for donations to our film project. Nice. So, mm -hmm. Nice. Gorgeous. Yeah. 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 So this yeah. actually just came to me before the last question. Oh, did I cut you off? Was there anything else you wanted to add there? No. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Um, I do always love to leave people with helpful takeaways. So I'm curious if there are artists out there who are like, okay, I'm passionate about this thing. Like, how do I step forward and make a change there? Like, practically, how do I make that happen? So what would be one or two pieces of advice or tips you might give such a person who's an artist and wants to make a change um, that they could actually go ahead and do that, practically speaking? I would say that you should reach out to your friends and your community because mm. There's definitely like-minded people around you and they might not be speaking up about it, but I'm mm. that people yeah. feel a similar way that you do. And like more people talking about it, the better. And I think that once you get the conversation rolling, that's when things start mm -hmm. happening. And I mean, I definitely I think it. you couldn't create yeah. this collective without the team of three of us. Yeah. Uh, doing this as a one-man show would be a little difficult. Yeah, um, we're definitely keeping each other like accountable and it's nice mm -hmm. to be able to be like, I feel stressed. And he's like, I also feel stressed. And <laughs> that is, yeah. I think, a good thing to just have other people behind you. Right. As, yeah. And then as well as just like yeah. engagement and just yeah. figuring out. And like, don't be afraid. Just like, go for it. Yeah. It's okay. uh, yeah. It's like you could be friends with something and no one, you go for a certain amount of time not ever talking about an mm -hmm. issue. And then someone says something and you're like, yeah, I feel the same way. Yeah, totally. like you realize about these ways that you do think alike, and then from there you can work together to make change. Yes, definitely. Yeah, community is a big thing too. Just, yeah, so good. <laughs> Love it. Did you have anything, Keaton? That one or two tips? How are you? I, mean, I, them, so. <laughs> I was kind of going to say the same thing as Charlotte and other than just like if you have something you're passionate about just commit to it and if you know yeah it, it requires a lot of work to like actually you know put on the thing that you're trying to do and but if you're really passionate like don't be afraid to commit and just go all out and follow like what yeah, you yeah. Yeah, and I feel like this applies to a life in the arts too. It's like, you know, going to your ballet class day after day. It's like, that has to be enough. Yeah. Because the payoff, as we might like technically call it, like being in those stage lights and having like, you know, hundreds of people clapping for you, like that's maybe if you get to that point, like a few times a month, mm -hmm. going to ballet class every day, that has to be, the work has to be enough. 
if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You definitely, I think the passion should fuel your, your ability to work. Right. Yeah. So. No, it's true. And if it's not, you know, if what you're doing, if the passion isn't there to fill your work, it's like, that's when maybe it's time to step back and think. Yeah, yeah, no, I was actually just talking to my mom about this because I was like, <laughs> Mom, I'm feeling really overwhelmed and stressed out. And she was like, okay, well, like, do you think you should, you know, stop doing something, like cut something out? And I was like, mm -hmm. then she actually was like, Are you, you need to like take things back on the collective. And I was, yeah. think, I was just told her like, no, because every time I work on it, I feel like this is what I need to be doing. And I'm like passionate mm -hmm. about working on it. But yeah. Is right currently there's a lot going on so. <laughs> yeah so. yeah and sometimes you know it's maybe there isn't a change needed but you just need to like get that out like oh I'm stressed out like yeah. this is a lot on my plate maybe you just need to say it yeah, yeah. No, exactly. you got that off and you go on and you keep working hard yeah, time yeah. for rest and self-care of course built in there somewhere but <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah no I just thought that was funny <laughs> yeah, yeah totally it kind of gave me like a self-realization I was like no like this is what I need to be doing right now like, yeah. Mm, that's awesome. yeah. I'm passionate about I don't feel drained doing it so mm. yeah. Mm. Yeah. when something doesn't feel like work then you know exactly you know you're in the right place yeah yeah it's like the same way I think both of us feel that same thing too yeah you know? yep. totally. yeah totally. I get to move my body in these expressive ways and it feels good. Like I get paid for this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some people yeah. don't think that way that are in the dance world though. Yeah. You know, some mm. people feel like work. It's really great when it doesn't feel when it doesn't feel like work. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. That's sort of all I have. Um, if there's anything else you wanted to say to, to leave us off with, anything else that you wanted to drop, we didn't say before you before we say goodbye or... no i mean i think we're just really excited to keep sharing with you everybody like um what we're going to be up to and yeah a lot of things still aren't like, super public that we're planning and plotting yeah. so um just like follow along yeah yeah, yeah. follow 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 works kind of collective yeah mm -hmm. all, all the social channels yes yeah i also need to say that any artists out there if you want to reach out to us and yes. have creative ideas, we're always mm -hmm. open to taking more people into yeah. our team. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's. I definitely have some people in mind. Like, if I don't see them, like the episode or whatever, <laughs> I'm going to be like, hey, check these guys out. I know you're passionate about this. Issue. You're an mm -hmm. awesome artist. So, go yeah. talk to them <laughs> or support or something. Yeah. 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 All right. Thank you so, so much. That was really interesting. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, it's so been great. really fun. Yeah, thank you, thank you. All right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. This conversation resonated with you. Like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Share it with someone you think might also enjoy it. And we will see you next time. Thanks so much.